Good morning, YouTube. It is December 21st, four days until Christmas. If you haven't gotten Christmas shopping yet, you're fucked. No toys around it. You're done for. Okay? You've, you've, you've passed the window of it not being miserable. You're done. It's over for you. You might as well not even go. Amazon, those packages aren't getting here in time. Okay? You got to go to the mall. Good luck. Anyways, it is December 21st, 2023, 9, 10 in the morning. 56 degrees outside. It's supposed to rain. Supposed to rain in the, in the, in the uh, Dirty D tonight. Triple D. Downtown Dallas. The Metroplex. The Retroplex. Or whatever you want to call it. I've never heard it called those things. All right. Um, a busy city games last night. Not a lot of great games. But some pretty masterful performances. And one masterful performance in particular that I think is uh, really needs to get talked about. Because there has been some... Uh, Tim Bontemps earlier this morning dropped the MVP straw poll. This is typically like where you start to see and get a feel of how these award voters view the, uh, of the awards. And if you're thinking, oh my God, <laughs> a little too early. Yeah, it is too early, but you know, it's fun, whatever. It's uh, a quarter into the season. It's a pretty decent sample size for a lot of these guys. You know what I mean? Mavericks opponents shooting at the rim since Derek Lively's injury. Blazers 72%, Nuggets 86%, Clippers 96%. Yeah, they, I mean, the Mavericks just got that. There's really not much else to say about it outside of that. There's just really not. Uh, Clippers beat the Mavericks, obviously. This was a good game. I mean, this was back and forth. Mavericks did have, you know, it was a valiant effort by the Mavericks to come back and make it competitive, but ultimately just didn't have enough. The Clippers have won nine straight games. Incredible. Has that, has that been the longest winning streak of, of the season? So far for any team, if you told me that, I'd believe it. Cavs beat up on the Jazz. Sam, uh, uh, Sam Merle's low-key having like a good season. Kind of weird. He had 27 points. Pacers beat up on the Hornets. He beat the Magic. Magic starting to sc- struggle a little bit. Starting to struggle a tiny bit. So great team, starting to struggle a little tiny bit. 76ers and Timberwolves. This is the game we'll talk about here in a second. Knicks beat the Nets. Battle for New York. Nuggets beat the Raptors. The Bulls beat up on the Lakers. The Lakers are just in a weird, weird, weird funk currently. Where since the end season tournament final, they have lost. Uh, yeah, they've lost four or five games. In losses to the Spurs and Bulls. Like, it's not like they're getting their asses kicked by great teams. I mean, the Mavericks are a great team, right? Okay, you lose to them. Cool. Knicks are good, and they're, the Knicks are playing really well lately. But man, they're, they're in some type of weird funk as a team. I can't believe I'm actually up awake early enough for this. I mean, I literally rolled out of bed before we started, <laughs> we started recording. <laughs> uh, the Rosen had a great game in this one. I, I did catch like, I did catch like a, a little bit of this game. DeRozan was going off. The Bulls just keep turning out wins. 12 and 17. What record would the Bulls have to be for them to like trick themselves into thinking they don't have to do anything at the deadline? What record do you think they have to be for them to trick themselves into being like, oh, you know what? Maybe we don't trade guys. 500? I would say within three games of the play-in, which they might be right now. I mean, the, the, West, you, the West, you have to have a 500 record to be in the play-in currently, which is fucking crazy. Like, that's nuts. You have to be an above 500 team to even be in the play-in. Um, yeah, the Bulls are one game out of the, of the play-in currently. <laughs> oh, God, man. The East is a joke. And I can't believe we really try to do this East-West thing every single summer. The East is probably... No, I mean, definitely a little bit more top heavy. But the West is just way, way, way more balanced. Way more balanced. I mean, just looking at these teams again. With, with Jawback, I'll throw the Grizzlies into this mix. They just might have dug themselves too deep of a hole, but I'll throw them into this mix. You're going to have two pretty good teams on the outside looking in by the end of it. Like... The Jazz, the Blazers, and the Spurs are the only two te- three teams where I could say, yeah, they're pretty bad. Like, they're not good.
going to ruin our chances of getting Drummond. So, I mean, it's interesting. It's going to be a bloodbath. And it's probably going to be whoever's healthiest, but. Damn. Hawks beat the Rockets. This was a hilarious game. The Hawks were just begging to get come back on over and over and over. And then the Celtics blow out the Kings on the second night of a back-to-back with no Jason Tatum. The Celtics going to Sacramento and just spank. Spank the Kings. Porzingis was incredible in this game. Uh, Derek White was incredible yet again. They shot 55% from the field and 52% from three on 42 attempts. The Kings are now 16 and 10. They're good. It's funny because I saw, I don't remember who it was. There was some guy on Twitter who I think just made a suggestion that the, that the Kings need an elite defensive wing. And he was getting blasted. Blasted by Kings fans. I mean, fucking blasted. Who were like, oh, <laughs> you just exposed yourself. You, you just exposed yourself. You have not watched the Kings. You've not watched them because Keegan Murray. They were like saying, Keegan Murray's been an elite defensive wing. And I think this guy was just saying they needed another one. Like, their defense sucks. They need another one. If they really want to be competitive, like, they, they need another one. That's how it works. Maybe these injuries is what we needed to unlock Exum, give him more confidence. You could look at it that way. There's definitely, you know, injuries you could turn into positives. Like oh, this guy got more playing time. We got to develop this guy a little bit more. You know, uh, this guy got to work on parts of his game that he usually doesn't work on in games. On the bright side, I'd rather have these injuries right now than late in the season. Yeah, but the thing is, is it's not like it's it's not like it's one or the other. You know, it's not like okay, well, we had injuries earlier in the season, like we're good. Kings fans always complain about getting no respect, but like y'all are relying on Demontis Simonis. I mean, it's not even like hating on them. It's just like, yeah, if you guys want to be great and like really contending, like the defense has to get much better. It just does. It's just like, that's not hating at all. That's being, it's being correct. And then, of course, this game, which was probably the most hyped up game of the night, the Minnesota Timberwolves and their number one ranked defense. You know, you think, okay, Embiid's been going off lately. I think he's at 13 straight games with 30 or more points. We talked about Luka's streak, but Embiid's at a, having a great streak of his own. This will be the game. This is like the, the Sixers are going to clamp up. Embiid drops 51 points. I just, dude, it's, he's an incredible player. He is. He's an incredible player. He's a horrible foul baiter. I'm sorry. He just is. It's fucking terrible to watch a lot of the time. A lot of the time, it's horrible to watch. And you could tell in this game, like, the Sixers were damn near, uh, the Timberwolves were damn near scared to play defense against him. It, like, changed the way they defended him. Because some of the foul calls he gets are, are kind of egregious. But he's still a dominant player. Like, I, I, I think some people let, that, let him doing that blind them into thinking he's, like, not a good player. But he, he, he's a great player. And I, the problem is he's a, he's a flopper. There's a difference between flopping and foul baiting. He does both, but he, he's an egregious flopper. The Sixers are a fun regular season team, aside from Embiid flopping and foul baiting, but I just can't trust them until I see Embiid have a healthy playoff run where he doesn't get significantly worse on the regular season. Yeah, he like consistently drops like 10 points per game in the playoffs in the regular season, um, or at least he did last year. Uh, yeah, man. Agreed. It's just fun. We go through this every year and then watch like 50-year-old Al Horford lock him up in the second round. <laughs> I mean, we said this about last year. Too. Like, we said this about last year where we were like, all right, dude, do it in the playoffs or else we kind of don't care anymore. We said this last year. And then immediately, like, he's so good in the regular season. He is so good in the regular season that the moment the, the next regular season starts, it's like, uh, actually, like, 
Okay. Okay. Like, we'll give you a bit of a pass again. We'll let it slide. Could you imagine a playoff series where he gets a whistle like he does in the regular season? I mean, his free throw rate is around the same, I think. He's just really struggled with double team. Well, let's have this talk funnel into Tim Bontemps NBA MVP straw poll. 100 league insiders. So 100 league insiders. I believe these guys are all voters. As well, right? That's like the whole point of this. Is that the whole point of this? That these are all uh, voters, so. It would be foolish to think Embiid has this. Embiid is comfortably first. Over the past three campaigns, the player who led the initial straw poll, LeBron James in 2020 2021, Curry in 21 22. Tatum in 22 23. Finished 14th, 8th, and 4th. Oh, God. Yeah, I remember the Tatum one. Potential voters, I believe. Oh, do they not know yet? Okay. What do I got to do? What do I got to do to get a ballot? Uh, sir, your name is slightly biased. Uh, you returned the ballot to us, and it was all Mavericks players. We're, we're removing your ballot. All right, let's take a look at this. This is my first time seeing it. Uh, Embiid first. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, if the season weren't in today, Embiid's like running away with it. He's just been incredible. Jokic second. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy in, in, a, in a year like this for Jokic where uh, it, it, he hasn't been, he's been incredible, but he, he hasn't been like, you know, the Jokic that I think we're all kind of accustomed to being. Advanced metrics still love him. They don't love him, love him, though, because he, he's usually, like, running away with the advanced metrics. Like, he's usually just head and shoulders better than anybody else. Some of this advanced metric stuff, like EPM, he's almost always first. He's third this year behind Joel Embiid and Shea. Yad is third. He's been incredible. Jokic is having a down year. He had like the worst three game stretch of his life, and it's December. That's what's hurting him. Yeah, I mean, he'll, I'm I'm very confident he'll figure it out. And again, even his like horrible stretch is still pretty damn good. Shea fourth, Luca fifth. I feel like that's unqu unquestionably the top five. I don't I don't know how you could have anyone else in the top five outside of those guys. Um, I mean, me personally, if if like just the nature of the award, most valuable. Uh, Luca's got to be higher than this. I mean, that's just my opinion. The the Mavericks are completely and totally fucked without him. But I, I get, I do get where they might be coming from. It's it's like some of the advanced number stuff, which these guys a hundred percent look at, is is weird with him. Like there's there's some numbers that say they're better with him off the floor. Obviously, that's not true at all. But I'm just saying there are numbers out there like uh his cleaning the glass on off stuff. Shows that uh, he's been a, a net negative for the Mavericks. Again, a completely and totally insane stat. But Also seems like Embiid voter fatigue hasn't set in the same way to do with Jokic after his lack of playoff success. That's what I really don't understand. But, but what it is, is he's just been so good. Like, it's, it's been impossible to ignore. If Jokic was, if Embiid was just having, like, a great season on par, like, he's been head and shoulders the best player in the league this season. Embiid has. That's just the reality. If uh, he was, like, playing the same level as these guys, no way he's first. No way he's first. No way. Tatum at six? Who gave Tatum a first place? Like, what? Is that just, hey, he's the best player on the best team? Hey, I'm an old-fashioned guy. Best player on the best team gets it for me. Or is that Brian? Did someone give Brian Scalabrini a vote? Was this Bill Simmons? 
Tyrese Halliburton, Anthony Edwards, Kevin Durant, LeBron James, De'Aaron Fox, and Rudy Gobert got a fifth place vote. Anyone missing from this from this group? Crazy. LeBron James. LeBron James at this stage of his career still playing well enough to be an MVP, like just in MVP vote conversation. Kawhi. What would Kawhi have to do to get in this mix? Obviously, he's not he's not going to, going to win the award, but what would Kawhi have to do to get into like, oh, well, you know, he got a fifth place vote. Because he's played in every game this season. He's played in every game this season. They've won nine straight games, and he's been tremendous. He's had 24 points per game this season. And over those nine games, I'm, I'm interested to see what his numbers are. He's been going off lately. Holy shit. Dude, he's been unbelievable. Over the last seven games, he's averaging 32 points on 63% shooting, 52% from, the, from three. Dude, when he gets into zones like this, it's just like, <laughs> if he gets into zones, like, when he gets into zones like these, man, it is just unstoppable. Doesn't even begin to describe it. I'm not, I'm looking at Kawhi's uh, basketball reference page. The hand? I mean, obviously we know the claw, but the hand? I'm not gonna lie, the hand's kind of sick. That's like, isn't that an evil organization in some uh, in some comic book universe? Kawhi is always fantastic. This is just him whenever he plays. Well, he's been extra fantastic lately. But yes, he's always been great. Uh, it's, it's really nice to see him playing and healthy and playing big minutes. Like, it's great. Just still one of the craziest careers, man. If, if he was healthy, if he had better injury luck, like, th this could be a legit all-timer type of career. I'm talking, like, top 10 player of all time. I, I genuinely think he's that good. But he's just not, he just hasn't been healthy enough, unfortunately. Because I, I think if he's, if he had like a healthy career, I think he has at least one or two legitimate um, regular season awards, like MVPs, under his belt. I mean, he had a really good case this Toronto season to win it. Didn't he finish like second in this voting? If he's healthy in 21, they win. Yeah, agreed. I mean, he's already a two-time uh, champion, two finals MVPs. How do I see just who won the awards this year? Oh, Kawhi wasn't even a first-team player this year. Really? Why did I think he got second in MVP voting? This year? Can I just fucking see? Oh, here we go. This is the year that... uh. Bro, why is this, like, so hard to see? Okay, here we go. Oh, never mind. Kawhi got ninth this year. Okay. He only played 60 games. He's unbelievable. All right, so this is interesting. I don't really have any gripes. Um... As he mentioned, uh, well, I'm, I am a little interested because they said 100 people voted on this. Who didn't have him beat on their ballot at all? Somebody didn't give him beat a top five vote. That seems a little ridiculous to me. Yeah, Zaza was a map, but when Zaza was a map, he tried to snap Kawhi Leonard's arm off in an alligator death roll. Who 
whoever didn't vote for Embiid only likes ethical ball. Hey, I respect it. I respect it. There's always some people with crazy ballots. Someone didn't have Jokic top three last year. I think a lot of it too is people. Uh, it's like the Hall of Fame baseball voting argument where it's like, well, this guy's going to get in anyways, so I'll use my vote on someone else. You know, like, well, Embiid's going to win the MVP either way, so I'll, I'll use my vote to make sure Gobert gets a fifth place vote. I like Fox getting some love here. Trey Young's ha been having a good enough season to be considered for like a fifth place vote, but the Hawks are just so fucking terrible. Kind of interesting to not see Steph on here at all. Um, not that I'm saying he deserves it. I don't think he does, but you, I'm surprised someone didn't throw him a bone. Like, yeah, fifth place, I got Steph. I think by season in, one clipper will end up here. And if they're still this good, I think Kawhi will end up having, like, th there might be some Kawhi truthers who start banging the drum a little bit. Like, hey, why didn't I? There's always, like, someone who makes a late push. A couple years ago, it was Chris Paul. I can't remember who it was last year. It's a bonus, I want to say, where by the end of the season, people are like, hey, why is this guy not getting talked about? And then people are like, okay, fine, I'll vote him fifth. I don't give a fuck, really. Like, hey, you've never talked about this bonus? All right, fine. I'll vote him fifth. Jesus. Would you welcome another Clippers series in the playoff? Yeah, I think that the Mavericks could match up well against them, but it would be tough. It would be tough. I mean, the Western Conference is going to be such a bloodbath. Like, I don't think there's any, like, matchup you're licking your chops against necessarily. Uh, like, if the season were to end today, who would the Mavs be playing? The Nuggets. Oh, yay. Jesus Christ. 6-3 would be, you're the sixth seed and you get the Nuggets round one. Honestly, honest to God, it, it, let's just say going into the final day of the season, this is what it looks like. I honestly think if you're the Mavericks, you consider tanking and getting into the plan. You stand no chance against the Nuggets in round one. You stand a much better chance getting into the play-in, testing your luck against the, the Pelicans or the Lakers in a one-game series than going up against the Thunder in the first round. Like, you actually have a good chance to win in that scenario. Pulling the Nuggets round one is crazy. This would be interesting. Like, whoever's in the sixth spot, I wonder if they would tank. Like, get me the fuck out. I want to be in the playing tournament. I do not want to play the Nuggets. Rather face the Nuggets round one fresh and round three a bit tired. Hey. I hate to be the bearer of bad news. I really, I really do. I hate telling good people bad news. You're not getting around three if you're playing the Nuggets in round one. Okay? Especially if you're the Mavericks. All right, let's look at this Kia. Uh, I can't believe I just said Kia. I literally go out of my way to not fucking say the Kia part. The rookie ladder. This was posted yesterday. Again, this is just one guy who does these, so I don't usually try to care that much. I think I saw these on Twitter, but I'm not entirely sure. Uh, Wimben Yama is number one. People freak out about this and say it should be Chet. Vic's been really good lately. Like, like he has been good enough. And I, I said this. I've said this before throughout the start of the season. Like, if Victor Wimben Yama just kind of puts together a hot stretch, he's going to win it. They want him to win it. He, he is very clearly and obviously going to be positioned as one of the future faces of the league, and rightfully so, right? Um, I don't think they could give it to Chet. But Chet's been incredible. 
Like, really good. I think Chet's been better so far this season. Um, if I had a vote, I would definitely vote for Chet, but I get it. I get what they're doing. And again, this is just one guy. Too. So I don't even know if this would be how it plays out. I mean, Hawkes, he's been incredible too. I mean, he's been really good. Brandon Miller's also been really good. Um, like, really good. I'm, I'm happy about that, actually, because they got a lot of shit for that pick. Asar Thompson. So, Lively is six. There's, there's literally no argument for Sar over Lively. There's just like absolutely none. There's like genuinely not a single argument. I don't know. This guy might not like Lively. There might be some like weird beef going on with him and Lively or the Mavericks. Because he, like, he had like Jordan Hawkins above him in the last one. And like he was getting coaches DNP. Coaches decision DNP. He was getting DNPs like, like pretty regularly. Um, Asar Thompson has no argument over Lively. I, I can't even, I'm, I can't even brainstorm one. He, he's just, he's just a black hole offensively, like too much. So he's a great player and I'd be excited about him if I were a Pistons fan, but Lively five. And then you know what? If you want to have Brandon Miller or, or uh, Jaime Hawkes over him, then okay. I'm, I don't care. I'm, I'm not going to argue about that, but no way Asar Thompson should be five over Lively. Keontae George, he's had some nice flashes. Bilal Koulibaly, I, I like Bilal. I think he's going to be good. The baby being nurtured in Wizards, mostly tepid bathwater. <laughs> Podzimski's been really good. He'll start climbing these a little bit as he plays more. Kumani Kamara, whoa. Kumani Kamara gets a shout. Yeah, he's been good. I, I like his game. I really do. He was really good in that game against the uh, Suns a couple nights ago. Great defensive player. That's what I'm saying. The Blazers defensively. Jordan Charlotte not being here is a crime. Who would you put him over, though? Scoot's been playing well lately, too. I wonder if Scoot is a... Uh, I wonder if Scoot's going to start making his way... I wonder if Scoot's going to start making his, his way into uh, the mix. Anyways. I don't really care about this. Should I do a... Let's do a very, very rough. Very, very rough. Slightly biased. Quarter of the season award. Very rough. Help me out here a little bit with these guys, because I'll, I'll miss players, forget about players that I'm not meaning to. It's just part of the game. DPOI. Let's just do DPOI. I mean, it has to be Gobert, right? Gobert's just running away with this fucking award. He's the betting favorite by a very comfortable margin. It has to be him, right? Let me just pull up some of the odds here so I can just get a good feel. I like, I like, because I, I know doing this this rough, I will forget, guys. AD has been really good. Yeah. I would probably say that he's, that would have to be second. I'm starting to wonder. I'm starting to wonder where, where does Chet land? Would Chet, do they do top five? Like, do they do like a ballot of five for these? Chet easily gets a vote, right? I, I, I'm actually, not, I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of thinking I would have Chet second. I'm thinking about it a little bit. AD has been incredible. I think Gobert right now is a comfortably, comfortable favorite. I actually think I would, I would have Chet second. 
that is a transformed defense. Then I would go with AD. Oh, man. I wanted Bam to win this award so bad. So bad. Yeah, Chet, Chet just has, like, game-wrecking ability defensively. Houston went from bottom five to top five with Dylan Brooks. Well, that was a whole thing. I can't give Dylan Brooks a vote. He's been great, though. Hmm. We have to give Embiid a shout? Caruso. Caruso is great. It's, like, hard to not give this award to a big. Because they're just, like, this, the engines of defenses. I'm looking at the odds right now. They have Victor Midyama six. Brooke Lopez, fifth. Brooke's been great. I don't know if I can give somebody on the box the Defensive Player of the Year shout. Jaron Jackson Jr., no. Scotty Barnes has been really good, but I don't know about Defensive Player of the Year level. I think I'll go... I think I'll go Bam. Because he's still been really good. And Brooks. Yeah, they've just transformed their team. Mio Doka should get Defensive Player of the Year. And I want to give a guard. Let's give one guard a shout out. Because these are just all of the bigs that you expect to see. Let's give a guard a shout out. Che. Jalen Suggs. Tim Hardaway Jr. Hey, he's leading the league in charges. Some of these odds right here, it's like, dude, if you bet on these, are you okay? You're not. You need to seek help. Jakob Pertle has odds. Jakob Pertle has the same odds as Alex Caruso, by the way. Dude, if you bet on that, please seek assistance. Yaka Pearl's been fucking horrible. I might, I might, dude. I, I might go. <laughs> we'll just close it out with a guard. All right. Most improved player. I don't give a shit about this. We'll just do like the top three. Uh, give me some. It's got, it, it has to be Maxi, right? I think Maxi is fine for this. I typically don't like, because Maxi was really good last year. Actually, you know what? No. You know, you know what? No. I want to save the integrity of this award and what the award actually means. I'm going Kobe White. And here's why. Kobe White went from like, is this guy like, you know, he actually had some flashes last year. If you were kind of paying attention to the Bulls a year ago, like Bulls fans really wanted him back. He was like starting to show some signs of life, some serious signs of life. But like, He's turned into, like, a legitimately very good player. Exum, Exum would be, like, a comeback player of the year more so than an improved player. He's not even on this. He's not even on the ballot. Like, he doesn't even have odds. Why is Cade Cunningham? Derek White. What? But Tyrese Halliburton, in my opinion, should not win this award. Kobe White, he embodies the award to me. Tyrese Maxey, very good last year and got a, 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 like a boosted role. I don't know. That's just, I don't, I don't like those guys getting. He was already really good. Taylor Johnson's a great one. He needs to get, he needs to come back though. How many games did he miss at this point? I don't even know if he's going to like. Jalen Johnson great, is a great pool. But the problem is, he's missed so many games already. 15 games. Let's just try to save it to where you've had to play 20 games. 
you've had to play 20 games. Um, most teams have played 20 games, right? Well, unfortunately, that takes Bam out of the running for Defensive Player of the Year for me. Unfortunately, that takes Bam out of the running for Defensive Player of the Year. I, I, gotta, I gotta stick true. Gotta take him out. Who do I replace him with? Who do I replace him with? I'll go Embiid. Embiid's been really good. Okay, Kobe White, Tyrese Maxey. Dwight. Shane Goon. Like Scotty Barnes? He's third. With the, he has the third highest odds. It's like, dude, he won Rookie of the Year two years ago. Yeah, we'll give Cam Thomas a shout. We'll give Cam Thomas a shout for sure. Then who would you... Desmond Bain is on here. Desmond Bain should have already won this award, so... I, I, I just... It's weird giving it to players. Cam Thomas hasn't played 20 games. All right. Throw the fucking 20 game shit out the window. <laughs> throw the 20 game shit out the window. Sharp has been great. I still, like, again, I, I don't like giving it to guys like that either. Sharp was a seventh overall pick two years ago. And again, just has, like, was really good at the tail end of last season and then has now put together, like, a, a bigger a bigger role is expected out of him. Like, at least Shane Goon, I can say Shane Goon's defense has improved significantly. How about this one? How about this one? How about this one? Jalen Sugg. You're talking about the fifth overall for most improved? Yeah, you are right. I'm a little too deep into the weeds here. Jalen Suggs. Hmm. This is real ball knower hours. Now, I know you're thinking, wait, Jalen Suggs was a top five pick. That doesn't make sense. You're uh, contradicting yourself. Listen, okay? I know what the fuck I'm doing. Jalen Suggs, though, it was like, oh, this guy, this guy's not an NBA player. Bust. Turns into one of the best perimeter defenders in the league and has been, like, legitimately really good. All right, rookie of the year. Right now, for me, it'd be Chet. I, I don't need to look up. I, I'm off the top of my head. Chet, Wimby. I don't give a shit. I'm going lively here. Like, he's so important to the Mavericks. Like, if you're a rookie and you're that important to a playoff team, that means something. I'm going lively here. The real, the real Triple J, Hami Hawkes Jr. And then who would be five? Uh, Brandon Miller's been really good. I'm cool with him getting that spot, but let me make sure I'm not missing anyone. It would be, I guess, between Brandon Miller and Asar, but I, I'm going. He's just. All right. Are those all the juicy awards? And now we, now we get to uh, Coach of the Year. I don't care. Executive of the Year. Could not care less. Clutch Player of the Year. No idea. What's CPOI? Clutch player of the year? Oh, don't care about that. Yeah, P Podzimski's, you know, he's just recently gotten like a good chunk of minutes. He's a good player, man. I like him. I don't know if, I, I don't know if I'd put him over any of the guys in the top five, but I like him. MVP. MVP. How delusional do we have to get to just completely ignore Embiid? Not ignore him, but ignore him for number one. Is there literally anything we could do? I would love, I would love for it to not, I would love for it to be Luca, but genuinely, like, we, we got to, uh, at a certain point, we got to be, you know what? No, fuck it. I don't give a shit. Luka Doncic, number one. I mean, he embodies everything about the MVP. 
what he's doing on a night to night basis is crazy. They would be they would be dead in the ditch without him. Okay? Dead in a ditch. You understand? Then we can go and bead. I'm thinking Shay third. <laughs> I'm thinking Shay third. I, I am thinking Shay Gilders Alexander third. Then Giannis, then Jokic. Like I got, I got to go Jokic fifth. But like, I mean, I don't know. That feels fine to me. That feels fine to me. Then outside of that, um, who would be who would be six? Like I think those are like undoubtedly the top five. And then it's then like it's a clusterfuck outside of that. Why would have an argument? KD would have a bit of an argument. I think KD would maybe be six right now for me. I'm just looking at the odds here. I'm trying to see if there's like anything like really weird and juicy. Victor Omanyama has the same odds as Zion right now. How the mighty have fallen, huh? Brandon Ingram's odd, plus 30,000. They're still insane, but Zion's at plus 50,000. Man, Zion. Trey Young at plus 15,000 is kind of interesting. It, only because if he, like, continues the level of play that he's been at and the Hawks, like, go on some crazy winning stretch or whatever, those odds are going to be, are going to skyrocket. I mean, he has no fucking chance of winning, so it doesn't matter. LeBron's at plus 7,000, which is, I want to say, like around 12th, 13th, behind Anthony Edwards, Staff, D-Book, KD, Fox. Halliburton's definitely got eight. I can see Tatum winning it. No chance. There's absolutely no chance of Tatum winning it. He's been nowhere near good. Enough. I mean, the, the award, like, let's be serious. The award's pretty much... Only matters after the All-Star break. Like, let's just call it what it is. Let's do All-NBA. I love doing this shit. I really do. Oh, it's a nice little thought exercise. It gets you thinking about players and you know, oh yeah, this player's actually had a great season. I'm, I'm not realizing. All NBA first team. No position. I'm interested to see how voters are going to do this. Start with all rookie. Are we really doing all rookie? All rookie would just be these five and then whatever other five. These five and then whatever, whatever other fives you got going. Fuck you. I'm interested if the voters are going to almost impose a. Position thing, you know. Like we know there's no positions, but I kind of want my five to look like a like a team, like a lineup. First team is easy since the top five MVP guys have kind of separated themselves. Yeah, I do agree with that point. Yeah, I, I do agree with that. I think it's just a top five in MVP voting. Luca, SGA, Giannis at the three, I guess. Who would be the four? And just his hypothetical lineup. Would Jokic or Embiid? Who, who would be like out on the perimeter more? Embiid, right? Drop it to five? Yeah. All right, second team is where things get a little juicy. Huh. Hmm. 
think LeBron has to be on second. I kind of think LeBron's been the, the, like the sixth best player in the league this year. <laughs> All right, see, so this is where it starts to get interesting. Steph and KD. What about Halliburton? Where does Halliburton go? I promise you guys they're going to put him second team. This is actually tough. All right, LeBron. I'm trying to keep it somewhat position based. Because I don't want second team. Like, I, I don't want it to be like, oh, all me and second team is five guards. Like, I don't know. That's just kind of weird to me. A lot of this is going to depend on who played 65 games. I'm happy you just said that. That just reminded me, oh, Kawhi's played all games this year. Yeah, I'm going Kawhi here. Kawhi Leonard, Kevin Durant. This is actually tougher than I thought. Yeah, because Dame, Dame's been really good too. Some, someone's not going to be happy. <laughs> like That's just the reality. Somebody's not going to be happy. Steph has to be on second team, right? Do you just go Steph and, and Tyrese Halliburton and close out second team? Oh, God. That means the third team is going to be a bloodbath. Tatum has to be on. Um, Darren Fox has to get, be on here. I actually, you know what? You could, you could just excuse yourself for not putting book on here by saying he's been hurt and he might not get 60 games. Yeah. AD has got to be on here too. And I do agree. I think Trey has to be on here. All right. Who are we missing? I think there's a good argument for ADB on second team, but who are you kicking out? Halliburton? Dame? I think Dame would be the guy right now. I mean, so what? Do you, the Timberwolves have the best record in the West. They don't get anything. <laughs> like, they get nothing. Uh, we'll give Gobert Defensive Player of the Year, but that's it. No All-NBA guys. This is fun. I love it. I know people don't like this shit. I like it. I guess I had one All-NBA player last year, and that's the only award they got outside the chip. It's fine. I guess that's true. I mean, who who would it be? Like, I don't think Anthony Edwards has been that great. He's been really good. But I don't think he's been, like, that level. Um, I could maybe see a Gobert argument. But if, they, if, they, if there was a center requirement, Gobert would probably be third team center, right? But there's not a, there's not a center requirement anymore. Um, if Book gets there, he's got a really good argument. He's going to have to play like a majority of the games moving forward to, to be in that conversation. You want to know something nuts? I'm looking at all these players. I think they've all been better than Tatum. But they're, nev they're never going to like not, they would not put, not, they would not not have Tatum. 
Like any of the honorable mentions, I'm like, damn, he's he's like kind of been better than Tatum this year. Can you imagine? Can you imagine if the Celtics got nothing? Like not even a not even a I mean they'll get like defensive play uh, all defensive team guys. But like not even an all NBA player. No way that would happen. Answer Dame. Can I throw another name at you? What about Chet? Is there a case for Chet? No Chet case over Dame or, or Ant? I think there is. I think there is a case. Shangun? shangun has been great. I don't think he's been on the A level. Chet over Trey? No, you got to have Trey. Trey's been insane. I think it's Dame. I think, I think ultimately, though, it's I think ultimately it's Dame. Three guards on that last team. Paul George has been really good, too. Has he played? How many games has Paul George had? 25. He's played a lot of games. What up, buddy? What up? Come here. Finn. Brunson's been great, too. This is a little uh, weird because I voted Brunson as an all star starter. Instead of guys like Trey Young, Dame. This is hard. But I mean, I don't. Does Brunson have a case over Dame? Or Trey? I need you guys to understand how good Trey's been. I know, I know that it's that they're terrible, but he's been popping off. He's been going crazy. Yeah, they fucking suck. Holy shit, Trey! In his last five games. Trey's averaging 33 points and 14 assists. Jesus. Scotty Barnes has a case, too. I, he was one of the ones I was thinking. But who are you knocking out? Every single player I'm mentioning is better than Beta. <laughs> That's kind of what's crazy. All of these guys, I think, have had better years so far than Tatum. Why are we so tired? Why are, why are we so married to having Tatum here? It's my ballot. I don't give a shit. What do we think? Scotty Barnes or Tatum? Do we go there? Jalen Brunson or Tatum? Do we go there? Yeah, Tatum will be the first. Like comfortably, they'll be the best team. They'll be comfortable. It's all said and done. Third leading score on the second seed isn't moving me. Chat. Well, there's also the defensive stuff with that though too. All right, let's just leave it here. We're spending too much time on what's ultimately a meaningless thing. The defensive player of the year, Gobert, feels like he's comfortably in the lead. It's so early for this stuff. Yeah, it's just it's just a nice thought exercise though to sort of figure out where guys are at and just how good certain guys are playing. Because you know, you forget. Like I bet I bet some of y'all didn't realize how great Trey's been playing. The same way that, you know, I knew Dame was playing good, but then I just pulled up his numbers looking at this. I didn't realize he's been that good lately. Peace out, Connor. 
Most improved. Kobe White. He embodies what the award needs to be, in my opinion. He embodies it. He is what, he is what the award was designed for. And Luka embodies what the MVP was designed for. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's look at tonight's slate of games, and then we'll get out of here. Thursday night, they're going up against Thursday night football. Oh, shit. <gasps> Pretty busy slate of games, though. Thank God. Too busy for my liking, but... Jazz Pistons. Wow, Utah's only a one-and-a-half point favorite. Could this be it, guys? Pistons are, are usually like 15 and a half point underdog. Could this be the one? Could this be it? I, I, don't, I don't think so either. I think the Jazz have been pretty solid lately. Marketing's back too. Yeah, they've won three of their last five. I don't know. They did play last night though. The Jazz are on the second night of it back. Pelicans and Cavs. Kind of a fun one. Cavs played a night ago. So that's a little unfortunate. They're already so beat up. Spurs Bulls. This one has some sneaky fun upside, actually. Uh, Pacers Grizzlies. That's pretty fun. That's pretty fun. Why the Grizzlies are favorite. Pacers did play last night, but crazy what having a John Morant does to a motherfucker. Magic and Bucks. That's a good one. Magic played last night. Clippers and Thunder. Juicy. A lot of back-to-backs, unfortunately. Lakers and Timberwolves, both back-to-back. Thunder and Clippers, Clippers back-to-back. Bucks Magic, Magic back-to-back. Wizards Trailblazers. All right. Silver, fix this shit. Let's go 72 games, and let's get rid of back-to-backs. They suck. 